Shall I start, Rajkumar sir? Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Om Namah Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namah Om Sri Krishnaya Gavindaya Sri Radha Vallavaya Namah Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Now, uh, we are starting our today's session. Uh, our uh, Today's session is jointly organized by Bhakti Vedanta Club, IIT Patna, and uh, Excellence Club, Silchar, Assam. Now I'd like to request our uh, Professor uh, MD Choudhury uh, to address the members, member participants here. Our distinguished speaker is also uh, has also yeah. joined yeah. our meeting. So, sir, please. Thank you, thank you, Pradipto. Uh, because the, the introduction time is too short, so uh, I shall be very brief. On behalf of uh, Excellence Club Shilchar India, we welcome all participants, and also we welcome speaker, Professor Raj Kumar Bhuya. This is the third lecture in the series organized by Excellence Club with an objective of stress relieving through a philosophical touch during COVID-19 pandemic. This third lecture is being organized in collaboration with Bhakti Vedanta Club, IIT Patna. The topic of today's lecture by Professor Rajkumar is revolution of consciousness. We hope this lecture will be helpful in relieving stress of the participants in this special situation. We pray all remain safe in this pandemic condition. Welcome to all once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I'd like to request uh, Professor Behera from uh, IIT Patna, who is the uh, chief of Bhakti Vedanta Club in IIT Patna. Sir, please. Hare Krishna everyone. Yes. Hare Krishna everyone. And uh, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. And uh, first time I am actually coming across uh, Dr. Rajkumar Bhunya. So I listen to you cannot on laptop there. I am very thankful to everyone, especially the uh, club, excellence club of Silchar and I thanks to uh, Dr. Rajkumar Bhuya also. And uh, about this uh, club, we started in 2009 in IIT Patna and where our students, faculties, as well as staff members, they participate in Krishna conscious activities as well as the philanthropic activity around the villages here. And uh, in this pandemic also, around 3,000, around 16 villages we have uh, supported by this club. And this club is a very vibrant club in IIT Patna. And when Janmashtami happens, more than 3,000 people gather here. So it is one of the big club, a very nice club where it caters the both spiritual and material needs of the students, as well as faculty and staff members. And uh, this club is uh, also extends many places, like in Howrah, we have a club, Bhaktivedanta club, <coughs> we have Orissa also. So this club is uh, uh, very uh, well known here in IIT Patna. And uh, I thank uh, to Silchar University also to collaborate with us. And uh, I will, I am very thankful to uh, Dr. Rajkumar Bhuya and my student, especially Susil, okay, who is a, a student here. And uh, we have all the students, they come and help us in this club. And every day we have all the programs in my home. So um, I will introduce uh, to Dr. Rajkumar Bhuya. Uh, Dr. Rajkumar Bhuya is a Redmond Berry Distinguished Professor and Director of the Cloud Computing and Distributed System Laboratory at 
University of Melbourne, Australia. He is also serving as the founding CEO of Manjira Soft, a spin-up company of the university commercializing its innovation in cloud computing. He served as a future fellow of the Australian Research Council during 2012 to 2016. He is serving or served as honorary visiting professor for several elite universities, including Imperial College, London, UK, University of Birmingham, and University of Hyderabad, and Sungha, Tishunga University, China. He authored over 725 publications and a seven textbooks, including Mastering Cloud Computing, published by McGraw-Hill China Machine Press, and Morgan Kumpman for Indian, Chinese, and international markets, respectively. He also edited several books, including Cloud Computing Principles and Paradigm, Willie Press, USA, February 2011. Is one of the highly cited authors in computer science and software engineering worldwide. A symptomatic uh, analysis of cloud computing literature by Graham, uh, by German scientist ranked Dr. Kunya at the world top cited author first and the world's most productive first author in cloud computing. Dr. Bhuya is recognized as a web of science, highly cited researcher for four consecutive years since 2016. I believe fellow, Scopus researcher of, uh, of the year 2017 with excellence in innovative research award by elsewhere and the best of the world in computing system field by the Australian 2009 Research Review. So I am very uh, glad that I met uh, such a great personality, both materially and spiritually also by seeing his tilak. Many people can understand that how he is both way, he's so balanced. So I'm very thankful. I am very thankful to Dr. Bhuya and to, I am very, very happy to meet him first time. Thank you so much, sir. Please, uh, you can uh, start your talk now. <coughs> so, Rekhishna, you can hear. Yes, so you want me to continue? Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank very you much. so much for joining. <laughs> so let me share the screen first. Okay. okay. So you can see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So thank you very much for you very much. organizing this, um, um, you know, spiritual talk during uh, the time when uh, world is facing you know, big health crisis. Of course, health crisis is leading to many other crises, which we will discuss today, and what we can do about it. Um, of course, I like to thank uh, IIT Patna and our colleagues from Assam, Pradipto and Susil, and various other colleagues who have put in effort to organize this uh, event in uh, such a short period. Uh, you know, we just had a quick uh, interaction on Facebook uh, when uh, so Pradipto requested me to let's have some session uh, during uh, Teacher Day. And of course, this uh, today is a also important day uh, to recognize uh, all the teachers, mentors that helped all of us uh, throughout our life and continue to help us. So this uh, uh, today's uh, discussion, you know, about um, revolution in consciousness. Uh, of course, most of the thought that I'm going to present and discuss are something uh, were very much influenced by uh, Abhay Chanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Srila Prabhupada, who is a founder of International Society for Krishna Consciousness. 
So you can see this picture uh, shows his giant step, a step that he has taken uh, from um, Rindavan to uh, New York. And so that step has actually led in promotion of God consciousness, Krishna consciousness worldwide. And it created a really revolution. And so this movement that he started has presence in all the continents and most many countries around the world. And so, you know, helping people to develop their consciousness. So thereby they're able to make their life successful, live peacefully and happily uh, in this life, but also make this life successful. So thereby even in their future life, so they can live peacefully and happily, uh, if not on earth, uh, but other planets or other countries are a different world, spiritual world. And today our topic is, um, I believe, very timely. So our focus is on how we can revolutionize our consciousness from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness. So thereby we can achieve uh, peace and happiness in our life. Ultimately, the goal of any living being, whether the human, uh, animal, or any other living beings, all of their goal is to be happy and live peacefully. Of course, that is the nature of all the living beings, fundamentally. But however, we come across a lot of turbulence uh, in this world, in our life, in our mind, in our senses. So we need to look into uh, you know, divine solutions for those uh, challenges and problems that we face. And uh, my today's discussion is primarily based on, you know, teachings of Lord Sri Krishna in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Bhagavad Gita. Of course, all the Acharyas and teachers have uh, provided their realization and thoughts, and those are the ones which uh, are certainly influencing uh, uh, my thinking as well. So as I said, so this will be uh, you know, driven by uh, Bhagavad Gita. And I'm sure many of you have seen Bhagavad Gita. And so here is the Bhagavad Gita, which is Bhagavad Gita as it is. So uh, by Sila Prabhupada. Uh, so this is a, you know, globally millions and millions of copies of this book are sold. Uh, many have in their homes and in the office. And I'm very glad to see that this is spreading. And I'm sure uh, our today's attendees, uh, all of them uh, will be having their home. If you don't have one, please procure uh, a book. And so this is a very important book for our life. So this is a manual for our life. So whenever you buy a mobile phone or a laptop or any material device, material equipment, so that equipment comes with manual. The manual teaches you, it provides you set of instruction how you should operate that uh, uh, equipment or that device. So when you operate according to those instructions of the manufacturer, you can use that uh, equipment to the perfection efficiently. Uh, of course, it delivers you best result. So similarly, this Bhagavad Gita book is a manual for human like human humans. So we are the living beings, human living beings, and we need to lead our life successfully in such a way that we are living happily and peacefully in spite of uh, turbulences that we come across in our life. Not only now, but of course, at the end of the life, also we need to be able to pass our final test of our life. And so if you are able to, you know, um, uh, read, understand and practice in your life and you can make your life successfully. Uh, so therefore, this is very, very uh, important uh, uh, you know, instruction that we hear from here. Of course, this is one of the revealed, I mean, uh, scriptures and uh, teaching directly from Supreme Lord. But there are other books such as Bhagavad Gita, Quran, and those of you who are following those, if you follow them also perfectly, your life will be successful. Okay. Then um, along with that, Sila Prabhupada has also translated we, uh, various Vedic scriptures, one, and one another is called Srimad Bhagavatam. And this Srimad Bhagavatam contains, uh, you know, glories of Supreme Lord Sri Krishna and his various incarnations. 
including various uh, Vishnus, uh, Lord Ramachandra, Narsimadev, uh, and of course, all the Dashavataras and numerous avatars. You know, Lord has what innumerable avatars. So uh, you can read about that. Plus, also, uh, this contains many. Uh, you know stories about great devotees how to lead life how not to lead life so like a both uh, pious life and impious life so there are many ex successful examples of great uh, kings and rajarishis and saints and the devotees uh, who have perfected their life successfully by following the instruction of Bhagavad Gita and all those teachings here uh, from uh, Lord and other devotees, including uh, Narada, Lord Shiva. So there is a, um, a section called, um, you know, Rudra Gita and Uddhava Gita. So there are many interesting ways you can easily understand. So I can say Bhagavad Gita is more like a manual for instruction, whereas this is more with illustrated with examples of life of devotees. So this is very, very important. So, yeah, so this will be very nice to read. And I certainly recommend all of you to, uh, you know, uh, read uh, uh, this uh, uh, Srimad uh, Bhagavatam, um, procure and uh, read, read it. It's very uh, highly recommended. So moving forward, um, often people want to know what does this Bhagavad Gita covers? So Bhagavad Gita primarily covers five uh, topics, five elements. Uh, so first is uh, Iswara, that is who is Supreme God and Jiva, living entity. Who are we, all the living entities? And of course, uh, once we have this, we know the Jiva, living entity, such as humans or any other living beings. Uh, and Iswara is a Supreme Person, well, so we will be able to understand and we will also be able to understand relations between this Jiva and Iswara. And we will understand uh, material nature, that is Prakriti. We will understand time, what is this time factor actually. You know, uh, time uh, is an important uh, energy of Supreme Lord. So we need to understand. Then of course, uh, in this uh, world, all Jivas are performing various activities. So those are called karma. So there are activities that will uplift our consciousness up. They will make they will lift activities that will uh, make our life successful. That will make us, uh, us happy and successful. So so there are some activities which are you know not to be done. So that will degrade us. So those are very nicely explained in uh, Bhagavad Gita as well. So these five topics: Iswara, Jiva, Prakriti, Kala, and Karma. Then of course in Srimad Bhagavatam. On the right side, you will see a picture of um, spiritual world and the material world. So the you know, spiritual world uh, is uh, like a Vaikuntha Lokas, a place of no anxiety. In spiritual world, of course, the center of spiritual world is, uh, you know, um, uh, Goloka, Vrindavan Dham. Then, of course, around Ayodhya Dham. Then you will see, uh, you know, many other millions and millions of unlimited Vaikuntha Dhams, uh, where one of your Istadiyavas has are a leading predominant deity. The, so this uh, uh, spiritual world is three-fourth part of this whole world, uh, uh, world. Then of course, other below is you see uh, material world. In material world also, there are innumerable universes. And one of them is our universe. And within that one universe, there are innumerable planets. And one of the planet is this uh, Bhumi, Earth. That is where we are living. Of course, within this planet, there are so many countries, uh, few you know, continents, and then many countries, many cities in, in each country. And in uh, each uh, country, there are many states. And in each state, there are many, city, you know, many districts and regions and cities and villages and suburbs, colonies, and finally, one uh, many houses. And we are just one tiny speck in this uh, universe. So uh, although we are insignificant, but when we when we connect with Supreme Lord, Supreme Iswara, that is Supreme Krishna, Supreme Allah, so uh, we can become significant. So we can be uh, as happy as Supreme Lord. So we will discuss as we go along. So this is a very important uh, subject matter uh, to understand, um, uh, you know, uh, both spiritual world and uh, material world. 
obviously this is what we do say for example like uh, any of us study or if you want to go to some other country uh, you need to understand what their country is what is the appliance of their country is what the rules and regulations are and what are the qualifications that we need to have to go to their country similarly if you aspire to go to a a place of no anxiety that is uh, vaikunta uh, so the place of full uh, bliss Uh, of course, the place filled with uh, you know kalpatharu, uh, wish wish fulfilling trees, and of course, they, in that case, we need to understand what the place is and what are the qualification we need to possess in order to go there. And this is what we do in our life every day. So similarly, we also need to understand. And having this understood, then we can create interest in this. Then we can make. Put some effort to uh, purify our consciousness so that we can uh, become qualified to, uh, you know, uh, uh, migrate to the new world uh, in uh, future. So, uh, so this, uh, uh, you know, uh, ancient uh, scriptures, in general, people respect them for their religious uh, significance. Whether they are Bhagavad Gita, Bible, or Quran. all these religious uh, scriptures are respected for their religious significance but actually they offer more than religious guidance it is not about just doing rituals they give you they give us practical advice on how to lead everyday life happily peacefully piously uh, you know so for example so i was just picked up to start with uh, you know one verse from bhagavad gita so this talks about how to mitigate miseries of uh, this material uh, world and this is very much practically applicable to each and every person doesn't matter what his faith is or uh, you know what they are following whether just uh, materialistic or spiritualistic doesn't matter everyone it applies so this one verse from uh, chapter 6 of bhagavad gita uh, verse 17 it's it reads Uh, he who is regulated in his habits of eating sleeping working and recreation recreation can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga uh, yoga system so if you are practicing yoga yoga means linking with the supreme linking with the higher so you link with allah you link with uh, you know lord sri krishna you link with uh, whatever name you uh, you know call uh, uh, supreme lord so when you link but as part of the process of the linking we need to be regulated in our habits our usual uh, you know for living obviously we need to uh, eat food so we need to be regulated in eating what we eat what we don't eat how much we eat this is very important too then sleeping so you cannot simply you know work 24 hours then you can't be yogi so you have to regulate how much to sleep you have to sleep in such a way that you can you know uh, uh, balance life of course we have to work so we have to be regulated in working what to work and what not to do the recreation of course we need some enjoyment too so we also have to be uh, you know regulate uh, what to do what not to do according to scriptures so this is very very important uh, so in fact today this world is facing covid pandemic is because of our you know not regulating in our eating habits so it is found that uh, you know in uh, china people are eating all kinds of wild animals from which uh, that uh, this uh, corona virus has escaped and then now it is you know shaking the whole world you can see that is because of unregulation habit unregulated habits of people without any discrimination they are eating all kinds of things then not only that when they are very proud about it and this kind of uh, behavior by humans is the one root cause of uh, this corona virus spreading whole world not only causing health crisis but also economic crisis emotional crisis and we hear everywhere people are suffering uh, due to lockdown due to isolation and not only that because of this lockdown and people do not know how to live their life then they are even taking their life themselves so side causes so here in australia in many other countries and we see this problem so therefore this verse is so fundamental uh, the, that everyone whether they are believe in spirituality or not spiritual or not they have to follow this otherwise this will uh, you know uh, we will be uh, destroying ourselves 
the humanity will destroy itself self destruction so i hope uh, people get this uh, you know this message uh, from bhagavad gita about the importance of uh, regulating then obviously there are many other topics are covered uh, uh, for example physical health so ashtanga yoga is covered in bhagavad gita and yoga is not becoming uh, you know very popular we have international yoga day and most people are uh, practicing that ashtanga yoga or hatha yoga just to keep themselves uh, fit uh, body hopefully as a result they can keep their mind also fit so uh, as, as i mentioned how much is to eat how what not to eat how much to sleep this very well covered in bhagavad gita then of course mental health we have so much of ambition in this world you know our personal ambition and desires and they won't be really fulfilled and that is causing stress stress caused by our own mind stress caused by other living beings you know other people uh, so how do we manage it of course uh, it looks like stress has become a set normally when we say management so management of wealth management of your investment so this is uh, like managing your asset but now asset this stress is also has to be managed as if stress is our asset but anyway this is not an asset but this is a liability but liability also has to be managed so we can understand uh, that then of course emotion and how do we develop positive emotion positive emotion is very important for our success uh, by uh, to keep ourselves fit and healthy so and then of course uh, other uh, emotional aspect like anger uh, then uh, being gr- grateful all those we can learn this is very very important for our uh, leading life peaceful and happily then obviously financial health as well so if you can uh, for example financial uh, troubles like for example we heard about global financial crisis a uh, few years ago so that caused you know uh, economic havoc worldwide so that is because of uh, over greedy by some people so uh, of course due to over greedy we are causing a financial problem for the ourselves for the rest of the world and causing also some problem then most importantly spiritual health ultimately we are spiritual beings and our spiritual health is also important and that will ha- and we need to develop certain positive attitude and our approach towards how to lead life successfully uh, live peacefully live harmoniously uh, with the nature and in harmony with every other living beings not only humans but all the living beings so this planet earth is not just meant for exploitation by humans it is meant for everyone so so this is very important that we live within the ecosystem so thereby we can have peaceful life so these are the topic covered by you know bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam and of course you can find similar topics uh, to certain extent covered by bible as well so every now and then i do browse bible or bible based magazines they teach us so they cover uh, such aspect now coming to uh, you know uh, this world in this world we are uh, looking for peace and happiness of course there are various revolution happen happen in this world and are they giving us peace and happiness let's take a look at so we heard we hear all the time about political revolution you know changing from one approach to another approach from uh, often it happens from you know communist party communist thinking to democratic thinking democratic thinking to republican thinking all kinds of uh, you know approaches political revolution happening so they all promise uh, you know peace and happiness of the world then of course during last several uh, you know few hundred years we see scientific revolution science is also advancing so essentially so we are trying to understand some of the nature Uh, you know uh, operational principle so thereby we can use the nature resources uh, for our own uh, good so so this is of course uh, lord energy how to use it so next industrial revo- revolution science has given many foundation theories and putting those in practice so industrial revolution uh, also you know has brought in many uh, engineering uh, equipments and uh, vehicles and so on which we are using it for various purposes including transportation flying from one country to other country uh, then uh, then of course uh, uh, further uh, you know advancing the way agriculture is carried out Uh, this way uh, able to increase productivity of uh, growing grains for our survival for survival of everybody so agriculture revolution we see all this kind of revolution happen and all of them have promised that we can live peacefully we can ha- live happily 
so however uh, you know what is happening even though we have seen so many advances uh, in these areas they definitely have brought in comfort material comfort 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 in terms of the way we live but however there is always some kind of pin prick somewhere that causes conflict among people conflict uh, leading to all kinds of problem problem including mental problem so like this uh, today's situation of covid 19 uh, pandemic uh, has, is causing uh, mental problem uh, mental illness and anxiety in the people even if you go back to you know you know few decades you see we uh, had this worldwide uh, you know world war 1 world war 2 uh, uh, hopefully world war 3 doesn't happen Uh, but this world war 1 and 2 happened there were a lot of devastation caused so much of damage so much of uh, suffering to people and to address that the solution was oh so you know various countries led and formed this united nation so this united nation when it was formed so you know it had around 50 member state but now uh, you know um, there are 193 member states which uh, actually means is every few years Uh, this united nation is uh, end up creating newer and newer more and more new flags which means uh, instead of uniting people are splitting you know there will always be some kind of uh, you know uh, difference among people opinion comes up and they want to make a separate country so this is going on so this is not really helping us to give us uh, peace and uh, happiness then on top of it uh, even though united nation is there regularly conflicts are going on so this is primarily due to everyone think they own this earth uh, ownership they think they own this sea they own earth they own moon they own other uh, planets and uh, because of which so much of uh, fight is going on uh, and of course this also can happen due to ego and supremacy everyone want to show supremacy so uh, every few years some country want to show that they are superior to others and then causing conflict so those are more of external conflict the what is even more serious now is internal conflict conflict within conflict inside a person so that is uh, inside a body of course it is the mind so this conflict is also causing huge uh, trouble to each individual so uh, then um, of course uh, now we have uh, it revolution with it revolution we have for example Uh, various social networks have come uh, come up including facebook whatsapp and so on uh, uh, in when you look at this facebook for instance we have thousands of friends it looks like we are very well connected but actually we are disconnected emotionally so for example you know during pandemic i see you know regularly i get at least 10 15 people want to be friends of me and i accept most of them uh, personally i do not know hopefully uh, 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 we can build connectivity or spread some positive message so therefore uh, we are virtually connected but emotionally disconnected so because if you depend too much on this uh, kind of uh, technology connection so we are emotionally disconnected as a result we have all kinds of problem including mental health so this mental health problem is one of the largest burden on healthcare and the economy worldwide so this was a projection pre pandemic you know something like um, trillions of trillions of dollar is uh, spent around the world just to deal with this depression so they don't have you know food problem they don't have shelter problem they have a house correct they don't have internet problem they have highly uh, connected 5g internet and national broadband network so all kinds of internet connectivity economy no problem but because of this so uh, much of focus on their own body and no connection emotional connection with anybody else as a result they are suffering from this anxiety and this anxiety is not only uh, you know uh, poor people but the rich people successful successful people who are successful materially in various domains are having this problem uh, you know as a result they are taking their own life so you uh, many of you heard about you know film actors uh, took their, their own life suicide then politicians and educated uh, academicians and all kinds of people so this is a big issue and now this covid 19 has brought even more problem so worldwide lockdown you know everyone uh, having uh, uh, you know mental problem 
So I was uh, thinking about preparing this and I just received a email message from uh, uh, SBI, State Bank of India, telling that you can double your happiness just by you know, taking the credit card. So whatever you got, your happiness level, just by taking credit card, you can double it. Double your happiness. You can see we have become uh, even more, uh, this is causing even more, this kind of enticing, uh, you know, things coming from everyone and we get fooled and you take the credit card and you spend uh, more than you can afford. Correct? Then you become uh, debt. Then you can't pay debt. Then you, what happens? Then uh, people are taking their life. I just saw today a message from on the Facebook saying that one professor in one of the college, you know, he took his own life because he's not able to, uh, the salary is not coming and not able to pay. Uh, then people spend too much, more than they can afford as a result of the problem. So these all are, you know, we have to be careful what is going on in the world today. And this is happening on the teacher day. So this I just received, uh, you know, a few hours ago from SBI. And, uh, and of course, uh, if you look at uh, the worldwide, we talk about economic, you know, focus on economic revolution, increasing the economic uh, transaction, you know, economic uh, success. So creating huge GDP, will it make us happy? And here is some data from Happy Planet Index that talks about ranking of various countries based on their happiness. And you will notice that the countries which are gender, uh, not high GDP, they are actually happy countries. For example, uh, Costa Rica, Vietnam, and uh, many Jamaica. These are our countries who, who GDP is very, very minimal, but they are more happier compared to countries which are economically powerful. And you will see the bottom most ranked are economic powerful, uh, but they are, are uh, no, not happy. So therefore, just having a high GDP doesn't mean that you'll be happy. So, so this is entirely different. Then of course, uh, this word, uh, if you ask, uh, you know, uh, read uh, Bhagavad Gita. So in Bhagavad Gita, what does Lord Krishna says about this uh, material uh, world? So he says, this world is created by Lord Krishna, Supreme Lord, but this world is a Dukkhalaya and Asyasatva. So what is Dukkhalaya? Dukkhalaya means full of suffering, then Asyasvatam, that is temporary. So even though this world may be trillions of years, uh, you know, life lifespan. But however, this last world is temporary. Then, of course, all the living entities in this world are temporary, including Lord Brahma, who is the first created being of this uh, for this universe, who is called a secondary creator for us of the living beings. So he lives for uh, you know several trillion years. Even he is also you know uh, having suffering from Brahma to an insignificant entity uh, on earth, such as ants, small ants. They live for just four weeks, but even they are suffering. So you can see everyone is suffering. So due to our, uh, you know, the way we live. So therefore what we need is, you know, certainly our consciousness has to revolutionize. So if our consciousness too much on occupied on, you know, only, you know, uh, eating, sleeping, mating and defending, or what we call four purusyata, we might have like dharma, artha, kama, moksha. So these days in Kali Yuga, in these days, you know, no one is following dharma, not, uh, you know, liberation, moksha, but most of them are focused on artha and kama. So we need to shift our uh, consciousness. We need a real change. And of course, the solution that we are thinking of, uh, we cannot solve them at the level of problem creation. That is what Einstein says. You created some problem, you want to solve it. You cannot solve the same consciousness as creation of the problem. You have to go up. So similarly, the problem the world is facing uh, today, and of course, you will face in the future. If you want to avoid them, we need to up our consciousness so, and then think of solution uh, that will help us. And in this case, uh, what we have to do is our intelligence that human has, we have to use our intelligence to think about, you know, why I'm suffering who I am, what is my actual role, how do I make my life successful, uh, and how do I live uh, life in harmony with all the other living beings. So what is my purpose? What is the purpose of human life? Human life is very rare, so we have to use it uh, properly. So these are the inquiry we have to make. So that means we have to move from our material consciousness to higher consciousness, higher, that is the uh, highest transcendental spiritual platform. 
and this is what in the past many enlightened persons have you know seek you know inquired and we also need to do the same thing so uh, so that means we are now looking into you know leading our life or living in a such a way that we can live the way our creator has made us our creator is the supreme lord uh, has certain go you know aims and purpose and uh, so we need to lead our life in such a way that we can also live happily peacefully eternally blissfully with full of knowledge so that is called satchit ananda so these are very well uh, taught in uh, you know uh, in both bhagavad gita and others as i said even if you look at uh, bible so bible genesis uh, 1.27 that says you know god said let us make man in our image so after our uh, you know likeness so that means uh, just like the same god quality so bible says god you know made human in his image so in his image means so we also possess similar quality as god and what are god qualities and then of course you can ask our lord brahma lord brahma is the first engineer of this universe the first uh, living being so he says you know who is god what are his qualities he says iswara parama krishna so iswara is that iswara means the supreme controller the supreme god his name is krishna and he is satchidananda vigra satchit ananda sat means he is eternal and is full of knowledge and bliss so bliss is beyond happiness so he is full of bliss so he is a real person and anadi radir govinda sarva karana karanam so he is the cause of all the causes not only in spiritual world of course in material world in for every cause so he is the cause of causes so 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 therefore so lord is satchit ananda so that means we also have to be satchit ananda but however we are not deriving any happiness at all in this world so we are supposed to be blissful we are supposed to be spiritual but our consciousness is you know uh, mixed up with uh, our uh, conditioning uh, of this world with our, uh, un our unwanted desires and that is actually causing us so much of struggle and as a result we are suffering from our mind and senses so this is not only human uh, all the living beings are suffering from brahma to uh, all this ants so um, so supreme lord actually uh, uh, krishna has made it very clear uh, in bhagavad gita who this living entities are so he says mame om se jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana so what it means is all the living entities in this condition world in this uh, condition world whether it is a moon planet or brahma's planet or this earthly planet or subterrain uh, you know patala planets all these planets living entities uh, they uh, so they are in this condition world and they are actually lots parts fragmented eternal parts mamai amse jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana but due to conditioning life that is manasasthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshiti what it means because of this conditioning in their life uh, all the living entities are struggling very hard with six senses that includes mind so what are our six senses we have eyes ear nose mouth skin correct all these the five senses plus up our mind also another sense so from from these senses we are suffering in this condition world so uh, uh, due to our all kinds of desires so essentially in this material world of condition world so we are illusion we think you know what is not true but we think that is truth so we do not know what is actually truth as a result we are able we are identifying ourselves with this body and body relationship so most of the time people are you know simply identify themselves with body and feel proud about it so we identified with you know our positions and some people identified with political parties and have a big fight correct you can see in every country so whether it is india or america or australia any countries people are identifying with their uh, certain parties and fighting about it and they identified with their wealth identify with their race you know religion so and of course some people identify themselves with uh, mobile phones also like uh, so to an extent where now mobile phones are uh, came here is something for male here is for female here for this brand that brand you no know, as a result you know so much of engrossed 
and uh, thinking that that is that will make them successful so you know materially uh, if they are uh, acquired lot of uh, wealth lot of property they will be uh, they feel they will be successful and they will find happiness that is not at all true so this is the illusion and in this uh, illusion of body consciousness what we do is all our time this kala that we got you know you simply focused on uh, satisfying our external well being our outer needs body related you can see here the picture that shows a person engrossed in so many things including mobile phones and vehicles and then cameras and me you know other living beings and uh, you know alcohol and so on all so this is how our consciousness is really clouded then of course this is man and woman everyone so uh, uh, as a result we just focus too much on you know outer look so including you know putting so much effort in uh, you know hair color in fact uh, here in australia government has uh, set up one big uh, scientific instrument what is the goal of the scientific instrument you used to develop a tablet and when you take this tablet Uh, like for example i want my hair to appear tomorrow red i take a tablet then over a period of time my hair will become red instead of putting a color of course we don't need to do but now people want uh, this kind of solution so much of research is going on scientific waste of our, our intelligence is wasted on how to make our hair color red or green or white or black or whatever you want of course we identify with all kinds of thing so this problem is happening then of course uh, Uh, most people time is simply spent and their consciousness simply focused on just four things ahara nidra maitunna bhaya so the eating sleeping mating and defending so how to eat nicely uh, what to eat then how to sleep nicely and which place to knees even for example in australia there are uh, pillows that are created using something called pillow science you want to make a pillow they are doing research and there is called pillow science correct even for pillow then of course uh, baiting defending fight is going on everywhere so this is not only humans but also animals you can see this is common so animals and humans are simply focus on this uh, ahara nidra then uh, maitunna and then bhaya fighting or defending so as a result what is happening is uh, we have uh, in the fighting we have produce you know uh, guided missiles you know you, you hear every country is uh, you know you know investing lot of money in uh, building missiles uh, missiles which are guided but these same countries are creating misguided people guided missiles but misguided men you can see so this is the way world is going so we need to change this we don't need guided missile what we need we need guided people then of course so all these entities just to uh, satisfy their senses they are struggling and fighting then uh, this is causing mental health problem that we already discussed uh, in depth earlier even if you look at this ant you know some of you probably know the life span of ant from birth to death only 4 weeks in 4 weeks time ant is born you know grown became adult you know then of course uh, found its uh, you know spouse then uh, mated then produce uh, baby ants then became old and died in 4 weeks time whereas we might be living maybe 60 year 70 year 80 year humans then of course other living beings live more some trees live for thousands of year then of course go back go up up towards uh, brahma lord brahma lives for trillions of years so it doesn't matter how many uh, days you are living how many years you are living but they are all struggling with the senses and mind and this struggle is not just happening in this time kali yuga you go back to millions of billions of year like satya yuga dwapar yuga treta yuga and kali yuga all the ages conflict is going on you can see here in uh, satya yuga the conflict between son and father to an extent where father is killing a son like this hereda kashyap and pranav then of course uh, this ravana with uh, de- unlimited desire to even uh, on all uh, you know sense gratification to an extent he will go and uh, kidnap uh, lord ramas uh, 
you know, uh, consort and wife, uh, Sita Devi. So uh, is going on. Then of course, uh, we know about Dwapar Yuga, uh, this Mahabharat. Uh, then of course in Kali Yuga, he's completely misguided. So this COVID is due to, uh, you know, Kali Yuga activities of uh, people not knowing what to eat, what not to eat. They want to eat all kinds of wild animals, live, if some of you might have gone to some of these countries in China or other places, you will see they take a live, a living, uh, living uh, entity like a living, say, say living frog or a living uh, um, uh, uh, fish or living, living thing, then put into boiling, uh, you know, boiling oil, burning oil, and then cook and eat. Just life, real life. You're not even dead. So what can happen? So this is a COVID-19 is the uh, you know, situation. In spite of this, I don't think people are learning. Uh, we see so much about every day, every newspaper type of COVID, but what is the cause? No one is talking about. Then what can we do to rectify the future? No one is talking about. They're only simply talking about how to avoid this, how to avoid this, how to develop a vaccine, how to live this, how to do that, all kinds of things. And then of course, they're even talking about how to have a sex in COVID so that you don't get this coronavirus. So this is a waste of our uh, you know, intelligence, human intelligence. So we are misusing completely. Then on top of it, now we've got internal conflict. So so much is going on. So we need to put our effort to understand who are we uh, and how do we fulfill our uh, life and make it successful. So when we go deeper, you know, uh, and, uh, grossly we can see ourselves, we can see our body and our senses, correct? Everyone see, but there is something more. Of course, we all recognize that we also have intelligence because we are able to make certain decision, correct? Uh, so we are able to speak something sensible sometimes. Uh, not most of, most of the time we are not speaking sensible at all. Yes, we have some ego, correct? Yeah, everybody has ego. Then we have some mind also. So this is the uh, second thing. Then the most important that we all don't see, most people don't recognize is the soul. So this is what we as a living beings, material beings, so we have a certain material uh, component and there's a spiritual component. This soul is a spiritual component. So these are the uh, three. So therefore, in reality, we are spirit soul uh, within which uh, this uh, soul is living in this body. So, uh, so here we see, we actually within spiritually, within each living beings, there is not only individual soul, but there is also super soul, what we call Paramatma. So because of presence of Paramatma, we have consciousness, our body is alive. The moment Paramatma leaves, finished, our body is dead. Okay, this material body also has a subtle body, which is this mind and ego and, uh, you know, intelligence. So today, science obviously, or everyone recognizes this body and senses. Every living beings, humans, non-humans, moving, non-moving, all of them recognize the body and senses. The next step is this intelligence and ego and mind. So some degree, you know, some people, some living beings have higher intelligence, some have got lower. So humans uh, do have, uh, are uh, generally supposed to have higher intelligence. Then this gross material body that we all know, so which is made up of all these pancha bhutas, you know, earth, water, fire, uh, ether, and uh, sky, and up. So these are pancha bhutas, so they are made up of the body. So those are material elements. Then this soul is a spiritual element. So our efforts today, most of them are simply concerned with how to satisfy body and senses. That's it. So we are simply living at Anna Maya Kosa. We don't think anything beyond Anna. Food and sense gratification. That's all is the focus. So generally humans are supposed to at least focus on four purushyatars. That is Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. So Dharma means some duty, at least especially spiritual duty. Um, Artha, some economic development and property, of course, uh, Isha Everybody is uh, you know, given certain uh, portion of uh, Lord's property to sustain, but behind that causes problem. That is artha, Dharma Artha, then Kama. So we have to also take care of our body and get some enjoyment, but there is a regulation, how much Kama. And then of course, finally, liberation. So which is uh, you know, uh, liberating from uh, this material world, uh, go back to spiritual world. So however, unfortunately today, people are only focused on Artha and Kama, most of the time. 
99% uh, time. We need to shift our uh, you know focus and consciousness to uh, higher. So as that, that way, uh, you know, uh, so we can make our life successful. And of course, what is this body and what is this soul? What is which is permanent, which is eternal? Uh, so this is again uh, nicely explained by Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. So he says uh, in chapter two, which is a summary of Bhagavad Gita, uh, in chapter two he says this uh, body that we have got, uh, you know, he, uh, is uh, temporary, whereas this uh, uh, soul is imperishable. It is not, you know, it cannot be destroyed. So this is very important for us to understand, uh, and uh, of course, what we really are. So, so because of our body consciousness and our focus on senses, uh, then sense, got, sense enjoyment, uh, as a result, you know, we are having all these uh, six enemies living inside our mind. So which are called Aristavargas. And these six enemies are Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madha, Masharya. And these enemies are not outside, they are inside us, inside our mind. So this is one of the reasons why everybody is actually uh, becoming architect of, the, architect of their own suffering. So karma means lust, unlimited desires. So lust, not only sexual desires, but also all kinds of desire, lust for power, lust for money, you know, lust for control. So, so much of unlimited uh, negative desires uh, people have. Uh, so this, uh, this is something like, you know, just like you go to ocean, uh, how many waves you can see? Unlimited waves. Similarly, our desires are so unlimited. Then, of course, uh, this uh, lust cannot be fulfilled. Our desire cannot be fulfilled because we have unlimited desires. As a result, uh, we get angry. Anger comes in picture. Then, of course, uh, this lust, uh, sometimes they fulfill, some not fulfilled, but we become greedy. When they fulfill, we want more and unlimited. So this greedy. Then, of course, we also have, you know, uh, moha. So, you know, uh, unwanted attachment for so many things. So then, of course, pride. Pride is there. Then finally, envy and jealousy. So these six Aristavargas are uh, enemies that fill our mind, our heart. Basically, our, uh, our mind and heart become filled with garbage, filled with dirty things. So we need to somehow, you know, uh, suddenly so purify uh, this. So I'm just uh, disabling. Uh, okay, annotation disabled. Somebody annotated it. So this also happens. You know, even in uh, the topic that we are talking spiritually and annotation happens. Okay. So uh, so how do we get rid of these uh, Aristavargas and enemies living inside our mind, our consciousness, uh, you know, uh, corrupted. We need to purify it. So this requires us to fill our mind, our heart with divine thoughts, divine activities, you know, and performing our duty. Uh, uh, outwardly look like we're performing our duty, but we do not have to attach to the results of those, uh, our uh, karma, our activities, our fruited activities. We can renounce them. We just take what is needed for our survival and then, uh, and then make them spiritualized. So when we do that, we can develop godly qualities. So what are the godly qualities? Godly qualities are the one which will help us develop love and affection for all the living beings. And then we will be able to live peacefully. And then we will develop strength, virya. And then we will be very compassionate and will be very friendly. We'll be very, very friendly to not only other humans, but also all the living entities. And when we become friendly to all living entities, we will not uh, kill them indiscriminately and to just to satisfy our tongue. And if people were just compassionate to all the living entities, there, was no, there would have been no COVID. Uh, there may, no, no, so many problems would have been solved. And then of course, finally, you will be Satchidananda. You see, there are many personalities, they are dedicated, they fill their mind and heart with godly thoughts, godly activities. As a result, they have processed huge strength. For example, Hanumanji. Hanuman, because of his deep, you know, thought, thinking, always thinking about uh, Lord Rama, uh, Supreme Lord. As a result, he gained Astasiddhi and he is able to lift mountain. 
correct so that kind of strength you can gain when you are able to uh, take full shelter of supreme lord because supreme lord has unlimited strength and then if you are attached to that supreme lord you will also get unlimited strength so just like if i need to have a power to my laptop what do i do i need to connect to a power socket power socket has to be finally connected to power source power grid so from there the connection is built as a result i am able to power my laptop and it has a similar power as any other one what is produced there similarly as humans uh, we all if we can connect ourselves with supreme lord we will get that strength we will get we will be peaceful we will be living satchidananda just like lord so full of uh, you know uh, bliss so so this is the way to attain you know highest happiness so you know uh, many many great personalities in uh, in different uh, religious and faith they have put their consciousness completely on supreme lord and made their life successful and because of that they achieved highest happiness and then of course because they achieved highest happiness they were able to their mind is very peaceful then they were completely free from sin then you know even in we all heard in you know various uh, scriptures about in uh, in previous uh, yugas like satya yuga dwapara yuga trita yuga so various devotees how they made their life successful say for example prahlad prahlad was so much focused on uh, hearing and uh, you know thinking about supreme lord so he is able to tolerate so many turbulence uh, he was protected by lord even druva uh, this king ambaris you know king ambaris uh, in, in shrimad bhagavatam there is a story he is a very great devotee of uh, uh, supreme lord and uh, once he was cursed by druva samani Uh, and then he just created a demon to kill him so at that time uh, sudarshan sakra just came uh, you know uh, then started changing uh, this uh, durvasamani so durvasamani uh, you know you know even the supreme lord not able to you know recall that uh, the sudarshan sakra uh, so then uh, he has to go and beg mercy of uh, uh, ambarish maharaj himself to you know um, you know to escape from um, wrath of uh, uh, so etc and of course we know how much of uh, turbulence and uh, trouble was given to prahlad by his own father thrown into fire and thrown from cliff and thrown into snake pit and even the maid uh, uh, elephant to run over uh, all kinds of trouble was given but he nothing happened to him is because he is able to develop full consciousness supreme lord when you develop you have a protection supreme lord protection supreme lord is in every living beings so he knows so he will protect so it is very very important that we need to develop that kind of faith otherwise if you develop faith like hiranyakashipu what happens hiranyakashipu somehow managed to become you know conquer three world so he has even taken over indra's position but was he happy so he was simply focused on making everybody to you know even the saintly people to do yagna for on on for him instead of uh, supreme lord so as a result he was so much focused on his own desire satisfaction so and filled with demonic qualities what happened he was not at all peaceful then of course uh, he has accomplished as a king of three worlds but no peace no happiness on the other hand pralad Pralad, you know, Pralad considered Supreme Lord is the, uh, you know, Lord of all the universes. So we are just simply living in it is, and he became completely God consciousness, and he focused on satisfying the desire of God, not his. So as a result, he filled with divine qualities, and so because of his, he had full fulfillment, that is inner fulfillment, and satisfaction and the peace. On the other hand, someone, uh, you know, his father. ruling three you know, uh, three worlds but he is not happy so this only shows uh, that uh, how our conscience should be and in uh, bhagavad gita of course uh, lord krishna also makes it those are the examples but here is the instruction from uh, uh, you know bhagavad gita so this uh, from chapter 5 karma yoga in uh, god consciousness in krishna consciousness so so this uh, verse is called peace formula he says भोक्ताराम यज्ञ तपसम सर्वलोकमयस्वरम सूद्रम सर्वभूतानाम ज्ञानोत्तमम शांतिं रचति व्हाट इट मींस इज भोक्ताराम यज्ञ तपसम सो 
so uh, the beneficiary of all our ignorant tapas and sarva loka maheshwar that one who is the owner proprietor owner of all the worlds and then sudram sarva bhutanam so benefactor well wisher of all wills one who thinks the supreme lord the krishna is the no you know, you know uh, when we are full of concept krishna and we know that so this lord krishna supreme lord is the beneficiary of our sacrifices our activities and he is the owner of all the planets and he is the benefactor well wisher of all of us if you know that you will achieve peace from this pangs of material miseries so here is an example of uh, prahlad who achieve successfully peace and happiness simply by knowing that who is the supreme lord is and who is the owner of all this world so and, uh, and who is the beneficiary of our activities and of course supreme lord doesn't need any of our offering so he is self satisfied but when we dedicate so he will actually not only give that to us but he will also give multifold so that is how you know you know many many devotees achieve success so that is the peace formula then what is success formula so here is success formula is the uh, the last words the conclusion of bhagavad gita So Bhagavad Gita started with inquiry by the Trasta and concluded by final answer by uh, Sanjaya who heard the whole Bhagavad Gita uh, due to the uh, you know mercy of uh, Veda uh, uh, Vyasa Maharshi. So this is what Sanjaya concluded that Yatra Yoga Sura Krishna Yatra Partha Dhanodara Tatra Sri Vijayo Bhutir Druani Tir Matirmam. So what it means wherever Supreme Lord is. there is supreme lord krishna who is the master of all mystics and wherever arjuna there is devotees so there will be certainly opulence victory extraordinary power and morality so therefore the victory is equal to krishna plus devotee victory is equal to supreme god plus devotee so anyone who without this supreme lord we are simply zeros simply like for example right now 135 participants are there uh, in this uh, session okay in this uh, communication so we have 135 zeros so 135 zeros is zeros but if you put lord krishna in front of it one it becomes trillions of trillions of valuable so therefore uh, even though we have so many we are zeros but if you can simply put supreme lord in front of it supreme lord whether you call him as a krishna or allah or jeha different names uh, for the same supreme god so he will become highly valuable so therefore it is very important to you know keep ourselves with krishna uh, so this is how even uh, arjuna is able to make his life successful you know arjuna has to fight with atiratas and mata very powerful uh, warriors such as bhishma dev drona then karna there are many many powerful they even had a weapon celestial weapon brahmastas but he is able to succeed there because of lord krishna he has taken shelter of lord krishna and lord krishna was his uh, you know guide mentor and he was able to uh, carry out the uh, you know commandment carry out order carry out instruction of lord krishna successfully because of his successful similarly if we can ourselves put krishna supreme lord with us in our heart in our mind we will make life successfully uh, not only in terms of victory materially but also extraordinary power extraordinary opulence then of course extraordinary wise activities so i am coming to almost conclusion uh, you can see so we talked about consciousness of various devotees and the teachings of lord so they are talking about consciousness higher consciousness so what is the connection between this consciousness and happiness so let me give one verse and explain their connection so this again comes back to the second verse which is called happiness formula so we looked at peace formula victory formula there is success formula and now we finally come to happiness formula because we all want to be happy and how to be happy and just from our previous discussion you can certainly conclude that uh, you know when our consciousness is transcendental we will be able to have our mind and intelligence you know steady and perfect when that is there we will be peaceful if not we will never be peaceful so here super, you know lord krishna in uh, chapter 2 uh, which is a summary of bhagavad gita so he concludes one who is not transcendental consciousness he can neither have a controlled mind 
not study intelligence. And we thought that without these two, there is no possibility of peace. And if there is no, no peace, and how can you be happy? So that is the, uh, you know, uh, verse, but I have put it, I made it more easy for all of you to understand. So here is, uh, you know, uh, uh, another way of looking at that verse. So one who is divine conscious, conscious, he will have spiritual intelligence. See, we all have intelligence. It can be material intelligence or spiritual intelligence. So if your consciousness is divine, your intelligence will be spiritual. And if your intelligence is spiritual and our mind is under working under the guidance of uh, uh, intelligence. So if our mind is guided by spiritual intelligence, then our mind will be steady. When our mind is steady, we will be peaceful. When we are peaceful, we will be happy. Even during this uh, coronavirus pandemic spread everywhere, if our intelligence is spiritual, we will be steady and our mind will be steady. And when the mind is steady, we will not be having anxiety. We will be peaceful in spite of all the turbulence that the world is undergoing. Then because of that, we will be peaceful and when we are peaceful, we will be happy. And this is the formula for happiness. And we can see the foundation of happiness is our consciousness, which is divine. If our consciousness is material, we will suffer from all kinds of problems. Say, for example, so now this COVID, what is the big highest concern is that if anybody gets this virus, maybe he, he dies, correct? or he might die, okay? If our immune system is not strong, maybe coronavirus uh, causes too much of damage to our immune system and our body, so we might uh, pass away. So, uh, but however, let us say you are very healthy and your immune system very strong, okay? So health-wise, no problem. But this coronavirus pandemic has brought other problems, for example, financial troubles. So if you are someone who have invested your uh, money that you hard earned into share market, what is happening share market is regularly you know going down the value correct and uh, uh, because of that so many people are so worried about uh, what happens to their wealth correct so so much about consciousness is simply filled on that wealth what happens to wealth what happens to wealth because of that also they are suffering and some people are even dying so therefore it is very important for our all our beings happiness uh, you know uh, materially spiritually Emotionally, in all ways, spiritually, of course, uh, you know, uh, you know, our uh, physical well-being, health, wealth, emotion, spirit, uh, spiritual, all of the well-being is possible if our conscience is divine. And even if you don't have, also you'll be happy. It is not that you have to own uh, the whole earth or uh, all of this. So this is the really a happiness formula, and this is very very important. And all of you, most of you are academics. So uh, academics are uh, you know doing PhD or uh, you know teaching students or you know uh, from the university side of course those who are doing PhD or students will graduate and start working for a company and you are going to compute and you will do so many things in this world. So many project and activity that you undertake may not be successful. Like if you're a researcher, PhD student or a researcher, we write a paper and submit. The paper may not be accepted. Correct? But if your consciousness is divine, you will be really simply be fulfilled and satisfied with that you put an effort, you did a research, you wrote a paper. If it is accept, accepted, very good. If it is not accepted, they will tell you what all to improve. You will take a positive mindset, then you will improve the paper, and then you will write, submit some elsewhere or submit the same journal, you will be successful. So it is very, very important. Simply do your duty to the perfection and then leave the result to Supreme Lord. Uh, it is up to him. We are simply, you know, instrument in hand. In fact, uh, you know, Gita says, uh, not a blade of grass can move without the will of Lord. So if we do not have a Lord's favor, Lord's favor we can only get, we make our consciousness uh, towards him. So we will not be successful. So you just simply put, make your consciousness the divine, the rest will happen. So therefore this picture so that the divine, divine concept, divinity is the foundation on which everything else resides. Divine conscious person will be spiritual intelligence because he has a spiritual intelligence, his mind will be steady. Because his mind is steady, he'll be peaceful. Since he is peaceful, he'll be happy. Otherwise what happens, our mind is like a monkey. 
you know monkey is never peaceful you might have seen how they go around and around everywhere so we don't make our mind monkey we make keep we have to control our mind otherwise mind will control us so one who is able to control his mind mind becomes a friend otherwise mind becomes enemy we have to make our mind friend and how can we make our mind friend simply make our mind engage on divine engage on supreme krishna engage on sri rama uh, so that is the way now how do we make our mind consciousness here are some uh, you know few paths that is uh, you know karma yoga you know performing your active duties uh, in dedicating the result to god then gnana yoga you know uh, you know gaining some knowledge of what is human life what is the purpose of life who is supreme lord gnana then of course there is called meditation which is a dhyana yoga so this is another astanga yoga very difficult pathway but you can do finally devotion to god that is the bhakti yoga then of course here you can see international yoga day you know our modi is leading here so that is more about you know bodily type improving our health and uh, of course health well being is very important various types of uh, such uh, hatha yoga are there including uh, you know this is very popular uh, all over the world bikram yoga yangar yoga kripal yoga and so on anyway those are bodily activities popular globally in western countries even more popular but we need to you know those who are born in india uh, the bharata bhumi is a punya bhumi we have to develop you know truly uh, devotion and the bhakti so this way we can make our life successful then here i put a diagram of uh, you know different yogas karma yoga uh, you know uh, gnana yoga dhyana yoga and bhakti yoga and you can see bhakti yoga is the most easiest one so developing loving relations with supreme lord so when you do bhakti yoga all the yogas will automatically come but it is okay you can start with uh, karma yoga if you cannot do bhakti yoga so these are the ladders of development so this bhakti yoga is like a you know uh, lift if you want to go to 20 in a in a multi story building if you want to go to top floor you can go through stairs you know first floor second floor third floor stairs like this uh, take uh, you know one hour to reach the top floor otherwise you can take a escalator go within a minute so i see jivers so bhakti yoga is something very successful uh, then of course uh, in within bhakti yoga there are many uh, you know uh, pathways uh, any one of the pathways you can be successful so here the nine of those given by you know pralad so these are called nine uh, devotional service you know um, so like uh, hearing hearing about uh, you know uh, spiritual matters so so here you can see just by hearing prakshit maharaj became successful then uh, kirtana chanting speaking about those glories of supreme lord so for example sukadev goswami became successful simply by speaking about uh, uh, glories of supreme lord and devotees or you can just your mind can be consciousness of god all the time like uh, this uh, prahlad whose mind was always conscious of supreme lord as a result he became successful then you can be even do seva pada seva like for example lakshmi devi so she is always uh, massaging feet of lord vishnu so she is successful then of course you can do worship of deity so there are many uh, devotees who have become successful simply by worshiping deity deity is the archa vigraha you can be successful or you can even pray to lord pray god is very kind you can do one you know vandanam so akrura became successful just by prayer of course dasyam which is uh, executing orders of uh, supreme lord hanuman is in a best example hanuman simply executed uh, lord wishes whatever supreme uh, hari has wished hanuman executed them as a result he became successful then of course you can become a friend of a lord lord is very kind he is like a family member you can become a friend of a lord arjuna became successful by becoming friend of uh, krishna then finally you can even dedicate a complete surrender to supreme lord so this uh, bali maharaj Bali Maharaj is a great grandson of uh, Pralad Maharaj. So he became successful uh, by simply surrendering himself to Vamandev. To an extent, so he got his uh, higher uh, opulence than what he had. Then Supreme Lord Himself has become a gatekeeper of his, uh, uh, you know, his kingdom. So these are the ways we can. So very simple, and by doing this, we can prepare for our final exam of life. What is the final exam of our life? Death. 
correct we have go, went through so many exams even to get into primary school we have to write some exam go to high school you have to write some exam you know here in australia my daughter wanted to go to high school so she has to write an exam uh, exam to pass to clear then only they will admit then university we have to write exam correct and to get a job you have to write exam then after getting a job to get promotion you write exam so continuously examining Our, we are exam if you are researcher you are examined every 2 3 months whenever you write a paper so we are simply going through so many exams but death is the last exam of our life and our goal of this human life is to simply prepare to pass the death exam so at the time of death whatever consciousness with which we leave this body so that is what you will achieve if you are able to you know uh, at the last breath of life you are able to remember lord sri krishna he will be appearing in supreme uh, you know uh, uh, abode in spiritual world that is goloka varindavan where you will be a family member of supreme lord you won't even know that super, he is the supreme lord krishna so so that is a, or if you are able to remember uh, let's say uh, narayana lord narayana you will be able to go to vaikuntha loka wait supreme uh, narayana lord is there narayana is there or if you are able to remember uh, brahma you will go to brahma loka or if you are able to remember indra you will go to heavenly planet but this is a material world so please think of you know supreme lord uh, he has many incarnation uh, there are uh, you know uh, vishnu Uh, avatars so you can uh, certainly achieve success make your consciousness you can see here uh, so like if you make your consciousness fully focus on wealth power fame prestige uh, you know achieving uh, position uh, desire to become prime minister of india so these are temporary desires correct but make sure that even if you have desire no problem but make sure that your consciousness is god consciousness so then you not only successful here in material world but you are also successful in spiritual world okay so so this is the only approach if you spend all your whole life on just simply on wealth power position and so on we will not achieve that destination final destination only those who are making you know focusing their consciousness on divine yet still performing their activity they are still you know there are many uh, great uh, wealthy people who are you know divine consciousness there are some uh, great scientists who are doing consciousness for example einstein so you can see uh, a statement by einstein einstein in this bhagavad gita so einstein he is a god conscious person he won nobel prize he could mc square fundamental di uh, discovery a great scientist in physics so he was krishna consciousness and he read bhagavad gita made his life successful even the politicians like uh, mahatma gandhi so they were god consciousness able to remember supreme lord made the life successful so it doesn't matter whether you are a academic or a scientist or a housewife or a working wife doesn't matter every every living beings just develop krishna consciousness god consciousness or at least consciousness of uh, say ram consciousness of narsimha dev any of your ishta devata you will achieve that success okay so that is the otherwise we will be just rotating in this material world and we will be facing this covid after covid if this covid over new covid will come correct this world is full of problems because this is a dukha and asyaswata do not make this as your permanent life permanent home so just go back to spiritual world so so to conclude the key message is you know we simply discussed about human life then who we are why are we suffering and then how do we mitigate and how to revolutionize our consciousness from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness so this we can do only when we are able to understand who we are really and who is supreme lord what is this uh, nature how is it working how is it operating and what is this time and what are our activities what to do what not to do it is very important what to do what not to do so uh, so these uh, scriptures will give us many examples of devotees who have followed up you know instructions of supreme lord will of lord they will become successful and those who just oppose and they do all kinds of impious impious things impious activities and they of course born as a dog or a cat or whatever correct so so this is a problem so therefore we need to understand and make our life successful 
by killing these enemies inside our mind correct you can somehow fight with uh, outside enemy but through weapons but inside enemies you cannot fight and they are becoming stronger and stronger and they are defeating us you need to kill them that is kama krodha moha loba mada masyara so be friendly be compassionate you know be loving person uh, be peaceful person uh, be a self satisfied person no greedy satisfied uh, no have a real knowledge don't get illusion have a real knowledge understand what is real and be a no jealousy be a happy happy for others so when we do that we will be successful of course how do we achieve this this we can achieve by reading scriptures read bhagavad gita read bible read quran depending upon your faith uh, doesn't matter you will achieve success then uh, of course associate with devotees associate with people who are thinking of divine consciousness that is very important association say for example if you want to become uh, a politician you associate with politicians correct if you want to become uh, you know president of a congress uh, party you become friend of uh, sonia gandhi she might make you a president of congress party correct or some day she might even make you a prime minister just like uh, manmohan became correct so there is association but if you become associate of some great devotees you become god consciousness you not only become successful here then in your next life you go to spiritual world so choice is yours so supreme lord is very kind and he has given us a free will you make a decision okay so and then of course uh, we chant supreme lord name then we eat what is prescribed in uh, scriptures in bhagavad gita uh, you know lord says patram puspam phalam toyam he says i will accept patram puspam phalam toyam patram a leaf a flower uh, water or a fruit if you offer him with love and affection he will accept it and then of course uh, he is not going to uh, eat everything but he is going to give us as a maha prasada then you take accept that so you accept prasada you accept prasada that is acceptable to supreme lord then only our life will be sat chit ananda and if you want if if since god made us in his image and he want us to be blissful he want us to be happy he want us to come to his eternal abode and not worry about this corona virus so let us go back and make this life successful we have been in this world for millions of lifetime you know we have been uh, in this samsara chakra we are going on suffering but this is one life you can make successful simply by making our con- life con- con- you know our consciousness divine of course here uh, you know in kali yuga people used to uh, perform you know meditation for thousands of years 10000 years uh, uh, like uh, this uh, um, uh, vishwamitra perform meditation for 5000 years Uh, some of them uh, per, uh, you know perform for 100000 uh, this uh, hirne kashipu perform meditation for 10000 years so they were not really successful um, but some of them successful but that was the approach uh, method that was given during uh, satyayoga in tritayaga people perform big big agnya then in dwaparayaga people perform big big didi uh, worship but for kali yuga simple kali yuga nama rupe krishna avatara so in kali yuga lord krishna has appeared in his name holy name chant holy name every scriptures for kali yuga prescribe chanting holy name bible says chant holy name quran says chant holy name our bhagavad gita and then all the vedas for kali yuga uh, in shrimad bhagavatam for kali yuga is holy name so the kali you know the uh, sukadev goswami as a speaker of uh, shrimad bhagavatam he said so this kali yuga is full of ocean of faults but there is one good quality about it any one who chants holy name of supreme lord they will go back to spiritual world just by simple method and you can chant anywhere any place so please chant hari krishna mantra any other uh, rama name whichever you like of course uh, kali yuga uh, nama rupa krishna avatara so the krishna has come uh, in his name holy name you can chant hari krishna maha mantra and make your uh, life successful okay so just to conclude to become peaceful we have to develop our consciousness which is divine so divine consciousness krishna consciousness so as a result we can make our life successful so so you can see with this i conclude and i like to thank all of you uh, for uh, you know uh, hearing patiently and then many of you raise hands then i will be able to take any questions comment that all of you have got 
सो थैंक यू वेरी मच हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू thank you sir for your wonderful speech today uh, there are few questions uh, in the chat panel sir uh, so yes, will please. you uh, answer all those thing now yes so let me uh, see um, sir many questions uh yeah, shall maybe i maybe you um, can uh, uh, yeah ask and then i will answer back yes uh does kurukshetra war in mahabharata is external or it's a war within sorry which one that is does the kurukshetra war in mahabharata uh -huh. is external or it's a war within okay so the real kurukshetra war has happened okay that is part of mahabharata during dwapar yuga okay now of course this kurukshetra war is happening at home inside our mind so every day we are facing kurukshetra war everywhere okay so just like krishna has taken shelter of sorry arjuna has taken shelter of krishna to win in kurukshetra war and we are not having that big kurukshetra war we have kurukshetra war at home also sometime between wife and husband war is happening sometime between uh, children and parents is happening correct and if you want to and of course as i uh, indicated in our in our mind filled with our istavargas war is happening if you want to win this war just develop krishna consciousness god consciousness you will be successful so we are facing kurukshetra war every second now this uh, covid is a kurukshetra war in fact it is bigger than kurukshetra actually that kurukshetra the bharat varsha now is the same thing whole world wide war so covid war is same as kurukshetra war and if you want to be successful even if you give up your life no problem in fact there is the best thing that can happen if you are able to remember krishna and leave this body you are the most fortunate person correct you so, go back to uh, spiritual world why why fight with all the people here go back but make sure that you sir, develop god consciousness so another question is uh, why people are uh, going away from spiritual consciousness why more attracted towards materialistic life that yeah. is another question from yes that is very good question you know this is a, so because uh, lord krishna says you know this uh, materialistic uh, or uh, sensual life material life is a sensual life correct sense uh, you know sense enjoyment so this is like a nectar in the beginning correct and normally we want a quick cons quick uh, results correct everyone want a quick result so because of that people are going for uh, this uh, material consciousness uh, then of course uh, the way we are brought up also that also you know causes so the way we are brought up we are told our parents everyone they say oh you have to somehow come number 1 in your school correct you you go to high school if you are running race you have to come number 1 everybody expect you to be number 1 everywhere unfortunately there is only one position number 1 correct so for example you study very hard this iit je somehow you get admission into iit patna and the moment you join adle patna all your parents expect all the student to become number 1 but there is only one number one position there correct so what happens if you are not divine consciousness if you are not self satisfied person what happens such people you know take their own life so it is very important that we develop divine consciousness then uh, and pay attention to the long term success not the short term yeah so because of this short term satisfaction short term enjoyment people are running after that but if you look long term then you will think about how to make my life successful how to lead a you know pious life then you don't get attracted to those uh, temporary things and temporary things are very attractive let me tell you even a great yogi can fall down say for example vishwamitra has performed tapas for 5000 years uh, standing on one leg correct so but when he come across menaka so you know he fell down 
this is because there are lots of other people put a trap correct so the uh, indra got worried that this fellow is performing so much of tapas he might you know want to take over my uh, position so he sent menaka devi to break his tapas similarly so there are lots of people send you lots of allurement you know lot of attraction to spoil you so you be careful correct so if you are someone you know a uh, very powerful person so if you are a man they may send a very attractive woman or if you are a woman they might send you attractive man so you know break uh, they will break your austerity they will break your uh, uh, your sincerity break your honesty and unfortunately our mind you know is such that it will get attracted to those kind of lowly things correct so like for example uh, let's take uh, a bar so i put like this if i put this object where does it go pass down isn't it it doesn't go up going up is very hard it has to use energy so we have a tendency of going towards uh, down lower consciousness yeah this is tendency because of tendency only we are here actually in the first place negativity yeah. Yeah, i hope this makes sense <laughs> yes sir uh, another question very uh, pertinent to this lecture sir uh, whether spiritual world really exists yeah so uh, does the spiritual even why we go to spiritual world let's go to this own universe how many people know that there, there is a brahma loka there is a chandra loka there is a surya loka or why go that far how many people in india know that there, there is something called melbourne correct how many people in this world know that there, there is a place on earth where there is a 24 hour sun there is no night correct among all the audience right now how many are left 100 plus are there uh, how many of them no 104 are there correct how many of them know that uh, right now sunlight is a 24 hour in a place called thromoso 24 hour don't know even i didn't know i went to norway the the southernmost that uh, uh, part uh, that uh, you know uh, tip then i was there in that uh, the city called thromoso so uh, you know it became 9 10 11 12 1 2 midnight one, like this whole day sun i didn't know correct why did they go that far so just because we are blind doesn't mean it doesn't exist so so now uh, in bhagavad gita simad bhagavatam uh, talks about uh, all the different yugas uh, then also talks about uh, um, you know the qualities of people even in kali yuga how it will be and all so all, whatever you see there it is all true even srimad bhagavad gita in the beginning when i was reading you know the forest of material existence i thought why is it talking so much but now as someone who has undergone gone through the politics lots of challenges how the people behave how people are greedy for power greedy for position just for their power and position they can do anything and everything correct so uh, such ignorant people uh, in a position so because of our ignorance we cannot say it doesn't exist you find a person who knows correct so then yeah, that person will tell you so if you can take a shelter of uh, uh, you know scriptures or take a shelter of person who has uh, who knows it then you learn from him uh, so you will know it yeah so spiritual world is there whether we know or don't uh, whether we know or not correct the fact is fact so even um, uh, you know this universe is expanding they are saying why do you say they are expanding so an, an australian professor from austin national university has received 3 year ago nobel prize for uh, saying that this world is expanding universe is expanding actually universe is not expanding yeah, our ability our telescope that you are putting so right now we have a telescope you can see up to that point next we develop a better telescope oh it is one far away correct so therefore for our eyes we cannot see so i cannot see who is their other side but i am able to see through a right eye right no i am able to see able to see all of you through this camera camera is focusing on you and from you it is coming to me correct before that nobody knew that internet was there this kind of thing is possible Right. Of course, during uh, Lord Krishna time, uh, Subhadra wanted to, you know, see I think Arjuna or somebody. Correct. 
so he gifted her a, a you know mirror and she is able to see other side and you are, you also know that some people can read a mind how do they read correct so we have so much of siddhis here itself why go so far so if we believe moon exist correct so india had that chandrayana mission what did they do they sent a satellite to chandrayana of course it fell down somewhere and we wasted all the money uh, but anyway so there is a moon planet and how is this moon planet floating perfectly in its own orbit how is this earth floating on this earth perfectly in the orbit so this is explained this is a lord's energy this is so beautifully explained in uh, in in the, in the book this is the first canto like this there are 10 cantos so please read and you will understand this this universe itself and this universe itself is just so vast now our tiny frog brain what it can understand i'm sure all of you heard about dr frog frog story right the frog in living in a well and the frog living in ocean correct the frog living in well thought that well is the high biggest universe in the biggest well in the world but when a frog from ocean came jam did ask how big is your uh, well he says you know you can't even measure but what did frog do <laughs> frog just expanded is it this much big this much big this much like expanded then just burst it uh, stomach so let us not tax our brain too much so right now our brain is tiny uh, so simply uh, uh, develop our consciousness of god just become successful don't waste your time in trying to become a monkey and uh, go in this next chandrayana to trip to moon planet or mars planet correct so uh, still it is a suffering place so let us uh, make successful then we have to trust faith has faith is necessary correct i have a faith that internet is work going to work therefore i organize this seminar i mean this uh, discourse for discussion for us correct i have a faith that this uh, uh, roof will not fall on my head we have so much of faith on this material thing correct we have to have some faith and because so many things are true therefore others are true uh, even if it is not there at least we live peacefully and divine consciousness correct yeah spiritual world is there sir uh, one uh, probably the last question because already it's uh, 5:41 here in india yeah. um, sir uh, do you think moksha is the ultimate uh, goal of a human life uh, if uh, there is a, a karma karma jivan or the life working life if we think about and mahapalashi uh, padachana that means uh, if the uh, result if we are ignoring the result only if we want to focus only to the work so is it uh, for human uh, being is it uh, yeah if we uh, i think this uh, mo- moksha is a misunderstood term, misunderstood term. so mm. our, our multiple people have got multiple meaning for moksha some people mm. say okay we want a moksha from this suffering of material world uh, uh, then what some people want to merge with uh, brahman so so that is the called uh, you know um, impersonalist view then some want moksha means what they want they want to leave this world liberate from here and then but they want to carry over this devotional activities in spiritual world so they want uh, you know moksha from liberation from performing material activities from uh, material world they want to engage in spiritual world so actually if you are engaged in uh, spiritual activities right here in on in this earth you are actually liberated already you are coming mm-hmm. under the grip of uh, spiritual energy see we can be under the grip of uh, maya or grip of krishna so if you are under the grip of uh, maya devi maya. The energy uh, then you are uh, you know there is a bondage you are here hold it like a uh, hand cuffed so if you are come out of this grip then you are liberated so if you are really liberated whether you are here in a spiritual world a material world you are liberated person you are happy in, in, in spite of all kind of turbulent situation that you are facing so therefore i think our goal of liberation should be developing bhakti devotion friendship right we can develop in multiple ways like five different rasas 
correct? Uh, you know, dasya rasa, sakya rasa, vasala rasa, prema rasa, or you know, sa, you know sa, shanta rasa. So we can develop all kinds of rasas. So depend upon our mood and uh, correct. So so we have to be engaged in those activities in that rasa. So it is better to be in a, uh, take a liberation to engage our activities in spiritual world. If not, you perform those activities uh, here. Then you go back one day, and in the process you liberate others also. Correct, liberate everyone that you come across and uh, go together. So yeah. Then coming to karma, I think karma is uh, uh, like a karma that is karma yoga. Correct. So karma yoga is of course uh, performing. So what it means is uh, you know, as uh, you are Isha Vasa principle, so you mm -hmm. have certain allocation. Correct. So that belongs to you. Definitely use it. So what it essentially is when you perform your duty, you perform your duty as if you are performing a service to God. Certainly, outcome will come. Uh, Sometimes outcome will not come the way you want because you are performing a service to God. The outcome don't come the way you want. You will not be unhappy. You will be. You will accept the result. Say for example. Uh, let's say you were writing a research paper in your university. You uh, you do your duty perfectly, correct? As a researcher, you do whatever the duty is, do perfectly. You submit uh, because you are not so much attached to that paper to be accepted. So you submit a paper. If it is accepted, you accept it. If it is rejected, also you accept it. Correct? You already suffer while doing perform the duty. Now when your rejection comes, you suffer double. Why suffer double? So if you develop that attitude, which is positive attitude, so then you will be happy while performing your duty. So that's, that's a goal of life. Yeah. Then obviously uh, the result that comes as a salary or whatever you get, you will use it. You not only use it for your service, you use it for Krishna service. So you are successful. That's what it means. Krishna is not saying that the result comes in you burn it. No. Correct. So let's say you perform some duty, you get twenty thousand rupees. Per month salary, only foolish person will go and burn that note. I don't want this note. The smart person will say, "Why I should burn? I will make a nice prasada and I will distribute to all the people. And I will also have it." Correct. That is what it means. Uh, so instead of ten, twenty thousand, sometimes you may get a ten thousand only. But you say, "No problem. Looks like Krishna wants me to only uh, do this much only." Correct. So this way we develop. A attitude. That is what this attitude to life. So this uh, scriptures teach us, uh, teach us attitude to life. Correct. Positive attitude for posi that's what positive thinking for positive results, and positive results will lead to positive outcome in you know uh, uh, final outcome. Yeah, positivity. So that is what karma is all, is all about. Sir. Uh, our answer question session will you continue or yeah, i am we'll personally stop. happy to continue as long as uh, everyone want to hear who are, yeah others can of course those who are in urgency they can leave we still have 96 uh, persons uh, you know mm. devotees are there so it is always a pleasure to discuss please uh, any uh, audio questions uh, if it is there you can ask sushil mr sushil you please help uh, technically If somebody wants to uh, dear, talk, dear sir, I have a question. Actually, two, three questions I have posted. Yes. And if you can answer now, it's nice only. The first one yes, is, yes. I understand that the month uh, that uh, okay. So I shall ask the second one. That uh, dear sir, after honest practice of bona fide spirituality for some time, one easily gets bliss and taste of loving relation with God or Sri Krishna. If it is so, why people in general do not enthusiastically take up, maintain, and continue with such great happiness and pure life? Uh, see what happens when you are performing spirituality. So we might, uh, you know, uh, do a lot of offence to others. See when uh, there are other devotees are there, then uh, if you perform certain offence to them, so the taste will actually come down. So as a result, slowly, slowly, because of the offense, offense to other devotees. So when the taste slowly, slowly comes down, then we start developing, you know, more uh, somehow without our uh, without our uh, knowledge, we start developing interest into other things. 
you know material things so that is how we end up fall down sometime you know great yogis even now and in the past we have seen uh, many examples uh, where uh, even though they performed so much of austerity they fell down yeah they were, came to the tip of their you know success the peak of their success at that point uh, they got attracted to something else fell down same thing can happen to us also so we may uh, lose a uh, taste uh, and then as, when, once we lose the taste then totally we come back to our old habits okay sir thank you sir so the, basically it's about the equanimity and uh, non offensive mentality towards each and every living being and devotee in, in particular uh, yes. i understood sir and that is the main reason of maintenance or lack of enthusiasm the second question is that sir uh, we see sir so much of wrong acts in fact there are so many ghastly acts performed by so many souls so many living entities so my question is what is the limit for an individual souls free wills it means the limit for the individual souls free will in doing wrong acts is there no limit we hear that you know there are so many assurances of freedom from sinful reaction by chanting and other uh, purificatory process of spiritual uh, life still uh, i am little curious to know what's the limit to what limit an individual soul can perform wrong acts Oh, Because that God is doesn't interfere in the free will of individual soul. That is yeah. specific to me. See, Lord Krishna gives almost unlimited, uh, you know, uh, free will. So if you become the highest, uh, you know, uh, demon, correct? And who can handle that person? Because the highest demon will create so much of adharmic. He will make the whole world adharmic. Then also he will torture even the devotees. only at that time that fellow will be killed by supreme lord himself correct so if you become a hirani kashipu a demon number 1 hirani kashipu type then supreme lord will come so he will kill and you go back to uh, correct so that is one other one is you do some minor 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 so of course you keep doing it so maybe some devotees will uh, like narada comes and reform you say for example you heard about uh, you know um, valmiki muni correct so valmiki muni uh, was a hunter so he you know killed so many living some of them uh, half killed so they don't kill fully they kill half and leave it there like that uh, did but because when uh, uh, narada sa he asked him what are you doing this uh, you know will anybody take your sin he says oh my family members are ready to share he says go and ask them they said no why should we take your sin so then he uh, you know accepted a teaching of narada narada told him to just say mara 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 he saying mara 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 then finally became mara 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 correct then became a great uh, saintly saint so yes um, sometime when we go to extreme actually uh, that time also you may get a mercy from great devotee Uh, like for example you heard about buddha you know buddha angulimala angulimala you know he just cuts finger of people and make a mala and put correct so angulimala got reformed from buddha so how much uh, you know impious you can do uh, you who were you come across you cut their finger and uh, make a mala and put like that uh, what kind of uh, person that person is correct he did so much of impious uh you know so but still because of mercy from uh, buddha then after that he followed then uh, he took 100 uh, full center of uh, buddha then he became successful yeah so of course that doesn't mean that we want to become hiranyakashipu uh, only vishnu has to come to kill this person and liberate him uh, but we all are small small criminals so we can uh, lord is very kind so if you take shelter uh, then repent Uh, then uh, from that point onwards you don't perform and he will uh, take his that's what he says sarva dharma paritajya mamaka sharanam urjya he says you simply sir you know uh, you know uh, just um, uh, sarva dharma uh, you know you just abandon all varieties of religion simply surrender to me i will take all your sinful activity whatever you did in so far he will take and then uh, from then onwards you reform So of course okay, there is no limit to sin. Just like there is no limit to pious activity, there is no limit to uh, sin. 
but we do not have to uh, you know use our brain to perform uh, all kinds of sinful activities sometime you know uh, in um, chaitanya mahaprabhu past time uh, there were two demonic quality people like, uh, what is the name jagai and madai they were actually brahmins and they read all the vedas from the veda they know all kind of sinful activities that people can perform all possible sinful activities and they did all of them but one day by mercy of uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu and nityananda prabhu they were reformed so they were almost like jay vijay from uh, yeah they were almost like brothers of uh, uh, hirnaka spun hirnaksha type yeah but they became successful so those are cases also so some people use their uh, intelligence to un- uh, understand all the possible ways you can criminal activity can do they will perform that's one way other people can be okay what are the pious activities you can perform follow them yeah both extreme will take you to success path but if you take the uh, path of uh, you know devotion or pious path then you reach in one shot to goloka vrindavan otherwise you might go to uh, liberated but you might go to impersonal world and finally so it is a big power. yeah thank you Bamba. very much uh, sir just uh, very uh, you know very satisfied with your answer and just one last question because the seminar is on consciousness yeah. so this is this is one uh, concept like in uh, dear sir i understand that the mantras used in the earlier ages are like programs that used yeah. to be executed in the space as the execution platform as we simply run programs in computing platforms the yeah. shrimad bhagavatam gives proofs of this when we make deeper study now my question is that this kind of understanding does this kind of understanding comes by development of spiritual consciousness because initially we have not such developed spiritual consciousness so we may not get this uh, understanding but as uh, you know we go uh, higher in our spiritual consciousness by regular practice and then when we make deeper study and we then we get realization so what's your comment yes. on that you know you probably heard about chatur shloka right chatur shloka the fourth shloka of yes, chapter yes. 10 buddhi yoga yes, what krishna Bhagavad. says when you devote he says he will give buddhi to understand all of this so it is not that our brain is becoming uh, you know great brain uh, by taking uh, spiritual pathway developing krishna consciousness but because you have taken that path and krishna will best uh, you know bestow that mercy on you that you will start understanding so that is why he says bhakti yoga includes all the yogas when you are doing bhakti yoga uh, so with time so you are you are uh, you know uh, your intelligence become so much spiritual spiritual by his uh, you know touch you will get it see for example um, when uh, dhruva maharaj you know he was performing so much of uh, you know uh, uh, for six months he performed uh, standing on one finger uh, one leg uh, om namo bhagavat uh, vasudevaya so he just chanted chanted so much when uh, lord narayan appeared in front of him he just you know got it extended he was not able to even speak so that is when uh, narayan himself he has to take his conch and touch so then he start doing prayers similarly that happened even to uh, pralada also so they were able to pray compose so fantastic vandana verses so it is uh, so he will give you that buddhi so yes uh, but anyway even if you don't have intelligence do not worry do not break your head so simply develop your consciousness you will be successful correct so there are many examples of great devotees who were so not a gnanis uh, who may be considered as illiterate but they are the first one to go back to spiritual world and on the other hand others who were considered as a great maha gnanis but those fellows will still take 100 years to 100 100 lifetime to go back to spiritual world so there are many interesting stories about, about a cobbler and a and a brahmana great brahmana so you know once narada was going to vaikuntha loka so he came across uh, brahmana so brahmana probably asked so i perfected you know gnana yoga i am the great devotee please ask narana when i am going to come back come back to spiritual world and uh, while going this uh, narada came across a cobbler Kabbalah says, uh, "Oh, I'm going." To, he he tells Gopal that I'm going to spiritual world. Any message? He says, "Please convey my pranam to Lord." That's all. So he goes back, go goes to Vaikuntha Loka. So there, uh, so he performs his uh, whatever transaction in, interaction with uh, Lord Narayan. 
So there, uh, by the way, I'm now going back. By the way, the two people have asked me at the Bhu Loka, uh, two questions, uh, you know. Uh, he says, uh, Brahmana asked me when he will come back to spiritual world. He says he will take another hundred lifetime to come to spiritual world. Then, by the way, there was cobbler, he conveyed his pranam to you. Then he was very curious. Uh, then he says he will come back in only one uh, lifetime. This lifetime only, the moment he finishes, he will come back to spiritual world. Then uh, Narana got puzzled. What is this? This person is a great yogi and jnana yogi and he is doing so many things. Uh, but he is going to take 100 lifetime, whereas this cobbler, illiterate, doesn't know anything. Uh, so, but he is going to come back in this life only. So he was very puzzled. So then uh, Narana said, okay, don't worry. Uh, when you go there, when you tell them this fact, when they ask you when you will come back, so uh, so they will, uh, you know, uh, they will ask you what was Narayana doing at that time. So you tell them that Narayana was trying to pass, uh, you know, elephant through the through this eye of needle, you know, needle, our uh, needle for uh, stitching. So Narayana is trying to pass this, uh, you know, elephant through eye of needle. So when he comes to Brahmana, Brahma he asked. Uh, Brahman, he tells, uh, Brahman asks him, okay, how was your journey? What did Narayana say when we am going to go to Vaikuntha Loka? So he says, uh, Lord Narayana says that it uh, will take 100 years. Then are you sure? What was Narayana ruling at the time? Then he says he was trying to pass this uh, elephant to the eye of that needle. He says, are you crazy? How is it possible? Huh? Uh, that's what he tells him. And then on the other hand, he goes to uh, this cobbler, and he tells what Narayana told. Then, uh, the, then he says, uh, you know, when I asked, uh, you know, when I, he told me, and at that time he was uh, passing uh, this uh, needle, I mean, uh, uh, elephant through eye of needle, uh, needle. Then this uh, answer of cobbler is, you know, that is possible. He says, I am just sitting in this, that uh, tree. There are small fall fruits. You know, in that small fruit, Lord has put thousands of those big trees. When you plant that uh, fruit, the seed, it will grow into a big uh, pepper tree. Correct? So if you can do that, what is there in passing an elephant through eye of needle? So you see the faith of that cobbler is fully 100%. Whereas the Brahmana doesn't have any faith. Correct? So like that. So let us not... Uh, uh, break too much of our head. So in Bhagavad Gita, Lord promises. There is a verse. Uh, that is one of the verse of that, uh, uh, you know, four, uh, Chatusloki. And that verse says that I will give a buddhi by which he will be able to remember me and he will have all the knowledge that other yogis will have. Yeah. So uh, just... Sir, uh, uh, Pradipto. Pradipto. <laughs> I think uh, uh, it's better to close now and uh, we can give, uh, uh, if, if Professor Rajkumar agrees, then we can give his email ID to the participants so that they can contact him in future. And if they have any other queries, they can directly contact him. But before that, we need uh, to take permission from Professor Rajkumar, whether we can share his email ID to all other participants. Oh, definitely no problem. My email ID is open. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir, so we'll share the email. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, also, this slide that I made today, uh, so I will put it online. So, buya.com, they can download. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, Pradipto, it's better to uh, close now. Uh, you please offer a of thanks to participants and also to the honorable speaker. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, in the boot of thanks uh, session, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, our distinguished speaker today, our main speaker, Professor Rajkumar Bhuya, a distinguished uh, professor from Melbourne University, Australia, who has responded to our request. And this program is actually jointly organized by Bhakti Vedanta Club, IIT, uh, IIT Patna, and uh, Excellence Club, Sitchar. And uh, I would like to say thanks to all the members of the Bhakti Vedanta Club and especially Professor Ranjan Kumar Behera sir, who has uh, joined here in this platform and uh, addressed the gathering also. And uh, I would like to thank all the invited distinguished guests uh, who has responded to our invitations and they have joined today and uh, they are uh, now online. So uh, uh, 
and uh, uh, my special thanks to Sushil, uh, who has given the technical support uh, for last two, three days. Actually, we are in good contact and uh, we have actually planned the whole uh, session. So thanks to Sushil for providing such uh, uh, technical support. And I hope in future we'll have some joint program like this and uh, our um, speaker like Professor Buya, sir, uh, there will be a distinguished guest, uh, speaker uh, like him in our joint collaboration program. So uh, today uh, we have many participants from various places of India. One participant joined from Bangladesh also. Uh, and uh, many participants from various states, from Southern India to Northern India, even West Bengal, Patna, UP, Delhi, and the Northeastern states like Assam, Tripura, and uh, Mizoram, many places. And a uh, few uh, uh, attendees were from Meghalaya also. Uh, so I'd like to thank all the people who are here uh, joined today. And uh, on behalf of uh, Excellence Club Silchar and on behalf of uh, Bhakti Vedanta Club IIT Patna, uh, we are thanking you all for joining us today. So, uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So thank so, you all. So it has been thank a you, sir. very, you know, nice uh, session. I enjoyed, uh, you know, spending time with all of you. <laughs>